You are going to have so much fun with this guy. I have absolutely loved working with him this week. Um, you're gonna love him. You've heard him on Sirius Satellite Radio. You've heard him on Bob and Tom from Louisville, Kentucky. The very charming Mark Klein. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being with us tonight back on our, our wonderful cruise ship. So uh, I've had a great time. I did meet a man that was in a little bit of trouble. I saw him on the, on the number eight deck leaning over the rail. This poor man was as sick as I've ever seen a human being. Bringing up breakfast from 1971. I felt bad for him. I said, Captain, straighten up. Drive the ship somewhere. He don't have to worry about that. What happens on the ship? Stays on the ship. thing stays on this ship is your money. Sorry about that. I did make a bit of a mistake. They caught me in the casino. Um, the casino manager said, Mr. Klein, you're not supposed to gamble. I said, this isn't gambling. If this were gambling, I would have a chance to win. <laughs> Hope you got <laughs> a couple satisfied customers in mind. Good to have you here. Hope you got a chance to go on shore and go shopping. I know in St. Thomas, every other store is a watch store. They got millions and millions of watches for sale. I've never seen anything like it. And a guy was trying to sell me a watch, and they're pretty aggressive about the, about the qualities of the watch. He showed me a watch. He said, this watch is water resistant to 10 atmospheres. <laughs> I said, son, what's that mean in English? He said, that's waterproof to 100 feet underwater. I said, mister, I'm a middle-aged man from Louisville, Kentucky. If I'm 100 feet underwater, I ain't checking a time. <laughs> Before we get into my show, uh, one more thing about watches, by the way. We have all kinds of things on sale in our gift shop up on 8 at the end of the cruise, which will be tomorrow. All this stuff goes on sale. I was up there last week having a 50% off fine jewelry sale. So I was going to buy a present for my wife. I picked out a $1,000 diamond and platinum pendant, going to look great on her. I go to check out. The lady behind the counter is having trouble figuring out the discount. I said, ma'am, this is so simple. If I give you $1,000 minus 50%, how much did you take off? She thought a minute and said, everything but my earrings. <laughs> That's deck eight, sir. Eight is where it happens for you. I love going on shore. You try to communicate with people. When you're in a foreign country, communication can be something of a problem. You have language barriers, but you try to get past them. I was on a cruise ship off the coast of North Africa, and we're in Morocco, and I go on shore. What I said to the cab driver was, please take me downtown for some shopping. What he thought I said was, please take me to Uncle Hassan's restaurant for goat head soup. <laughs> Well, I get in this cab, we're 25 minutes driving out into the middle of the desert, pulls up in front of this little dusty restaurant, fly bone little place, and, and I know I've been had, and I got a bit of a temper, and I, I, maybe he does too. We got into it pretty good. Finally, they had to call Moroccan policemen to come tear us apart off each other. But I will tell you, it goes to show that when two people of goodwill decide to communicate, they get along, and I will tell you this, you get past the lips and ears, goat head soup doesn't taste half bad. So. <laughs> All kinds of communication issues arise, even on the ship. You know, we have an international crew on our ship, and a, a couple months ago, I'm on one of our fine ships, and the lady who ran the gift shop was from Romania. She had a beautiful Romanian accent, spoke good English, but a beautiful Romanian accent, and she loved the comedy show. She would bring her clients down to come see the show. So my wife joined me on ship the next week, and she wanted to come tell me and tell my wife how much she enjoyed my show. What she meant to say to my wife was, I enjoyed your husband's act best of all. <laughs> what she said was, in her beautiful Eastern European accent, your husband pleasure to me as no other man. <laughs> My wife goes, are you talking about him? <laughs> she said, yes, when he finished, I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> my wife goes, yeah, yeah, that's him, all right. That's my man. <laughs> I 
I am a married man. I can sense the disappointment. <laughs> yes, ma'am, that's a joke. There is not a woman in the world disappointed that I'm already married. Well, I'm going to take that back. There is one. Thank you. Someone got that. Well done. Married couple? You guys married up front? Married couple? Oh, yeah. I can tell because you're not touching. God bless you. So good to have you here. How long have you been married, ma'am? Fifteen. Fifteen years. I love it. How'd you meet this pretty girl? How'd you all meet? In a bar. She was drunk. In a bar. She... <laughs> You met her in a bar, she was drunk? Well, I can tell. It is a shame about her eyesight. Yeah. I, uh... Here, here's how I met my wife. I did a comedy show in a nightclub in Savannah, Georgia. She sat in the front row. She didn't laugh at a word I said. I thought to myself, if she can't make you miserable, nobody can. As it turns out, we're opposite. We're polar opposite to any topic you care to name. We're an interracial couple. Yes, we are. I'm from Kentucky, and she's not a relative. <laughs> I was just as shocked as you are, ma'am. I was just as shocked. I was single for 38 years when I got married. Have been single 38 years. My friends asked me, Mark, why? Why'd you finally get married? You're happy and single 38 years. You're dating pretty girls from all over the country. Why'd you finally pick one out and settle down? Was it love? Was it lust? Was it loneliness? I don't know. I don't pretend to know. I know one thing, pal. After 38 years, I finally met that one woman who said those six words I waited all of my life to hear. My dad owns a liquor store. Is what she said. <laughs> And here's why she didn't laugh. As it turns out, we're opposite. We're polar opposites, any topic you care to name. We're just opposite. That's the way, it, physically we're opposite. You see me up here. I'm five feet, four and a half inches tall. I weigh 151 pounds. So I'm built real short and kind of squatty. My wife is a 125 pound, five foot, 10 inch tall, green eyed redhead. She towers over me as the angel of death. <laughs> And I said one time, honey, does it ever bother you how much shorter I am than you are? She said, only when you can't go on the rides with me at the fair. <laughs> now, about our third date, she did ask me, why didn't my height intimidate you? And being a comedian, you got to kind of think on your feet pretty fast. So I said, well, if your great beauty didn't intimidate me, what makes you think your height would? <laughs> She said, keep talking, Shorty, you're almost home. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, and it is true, we've been married for 25 years. When my wife walks in the room, my heart still skips a beat. Wow. That is true. You call it love, you call it fear. Doesn't much matter to me. <laughs> We communicate. Here's a great lesson in life, Ethan, taught to me by my father. Sometimes knowing when, knowing when to stop communicating is every bit as important as knowing when to start. An example. Every married man sitting in this room tonight at one point in his life has looked into the eyes of a woman he clearly adores. And with a straight face and sincere heart, he has asked of her the following question. Honey? Are you mad? <laughs> and son, I can sure as shoot and promise you, if you have to ask, she's mad. <laughs> and now she's mad because you had to ask her if she's mad. You've reached that point when you're on a date, girl says it, just shut up, stop talking, stop communicating, and I'll tell you why. You're in a fight, you don't know it, and you've lost. <laughs> Who has a dog? Hands up, who has a dog out there? Oh my, everybody has a dog. I'll tell you a dog story. We had a wonderfully affectionate, delightfully intelligent, mixed breed terrier husky mutt. We got her from the dog pound. We had her for 16 years. We buried her in the backyard a year ago, July. Oh no, she wasn't dead, just wouldn't stop barking. <laughs> Oh, 
know, she was 16, which for a dog is quite old. And when you lose a pet like that, it tears a hole in your heart that does not mend or fill. You mourn them as family members because they're members of your family. And typically, you wait some time before moving on. We waited six months. We got a new dog six months ago from the Jeffersonville, Indiana Animal Rescue Shelter. And as you're aware, when you get a shelter animal, it has infirmities. The coat needs grooming or it's malnourished in some way. This dog has a lazy eye, an overbite, and she smokes three packs of camels a day. <laughs> you have a dog, ma'am? What is your dog's name? Peta. Peta. Why'd you name it Peta? Well, the story goes, we don't speak Spanish. So you... I told my sister-in-law that... Okay, I've got another show at 11 o'clock tonight. Oh, no. <laughs> Peta for Spanish means paint in, the, in an area yeah, which I understand. Is. Okay, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Our dog's name is Lady. She's called Lady because disobedient shedding poop machine was already taken. <laughs> Do you guys have a dog? You don't? When you get one, I hope it's a smart one. I own Walk and Thee, the stupidest dog in the world. <laughs> It's true. Here's how stupid my dog is. Every morning for the last six months, Lady has done this. She wakes up promptly at 4.45 a.m. A.m. She shakes her collar with all the metal tags on it so that everyone can share in her morning experience. <laughs> she comes downstairs, goes into the kitchen, sees a reflection in the stove, and barks at herself. <laughs> because she truly believes that I have her twin sister trapped in the oven. Her brain is the size of a Tic Tac. She sheds like a wood chipper. She doesn't know who I am. She's our dog, we love her. She's good for my son. I have a 21-year-old son. They were good for each other. She taught him patience, empathy, and understanding. He taught her how to make meth in the garage. <laughs> well, she's a meth lab. <laughs> You're the only animal in the history of life in the universe that laughs. Keep it up. It's good for you, and it's good for me. You've been enjoyed and entertained. Thank you for being with us Give it up for Mr. Mark Klein, ladies and gentlemen.